Hello and welcome to video number 12. Um, we're moving on to the Stream Deck today. Uh, I'm going to give you an overview of the Stream Deck just to show you what it is and what it does. And in later videos we'll show you how to program it using axes and O's. But today we'll just do uh, the Stream Deck as it is so you can see what it is and how it works. So this is the Stream Deck. And I've got it on my uh, throttle quadrant so you get some idea of the size of it. Um, this is it. It's quite heavy, it's quite robust. Uh, this is an angle stand, uh, it's held on with magnets, you can take it off if you want to, to mount it somewhere else. But it's sitting there at like a 45 degree angle. Um, it's really difficult to light. These are LEDs and without the lighting on it, it makes a complete mess of the white balance and uh, autofocus so I've got a couple of lights on it trying to get my webcam to see it properly it's still not very clear and the colors are awful um, but that's the best I can achieve okay let's have a closer look at it so these are touch sensitive buttons they actually click you feel them they're tactile um, but they've also got an LED screen behind them. So when I choose one, you can see that uh, what I programmed in has changed. The actual graphics have changed. And if I go back home again, it changes all those. And there are different size ones, but this is the size I recommend, the, the extra large one. You've got plenty of buttons to play with. Uh, what I thought I'd do is I'll show you the reason I bought it to start with is I use music software and you run most of the music software with keyboard shortcuts and there are hundreds of them and I just can't remember them all. So here's a piece of software I use called Dorico. So I press that. That button does two things. It changes the profile, the collection of keys, and it's actually started Dorico automatically for me. So if I park that up there, and I'll get it running Dorico to show you how that works, give you an idea of what Stream Deck does. So I can say I want to start a new project, so new empty project, and Dorico started up. I can tell it I want to add a player to my score, and I'll select here a piano. and I can put it into write mode so we can write some music and I can decide what key I'm going to be in so key signatures and I'll do some in the key of A and that puts that in for me and uh, time signature let's do a waltz 3-4 okay I could never remember all those key presses it's so much easier on here and I've structured it to, to fix, sort my workflow and let's have a look at what's behind that so this is the Stream Deck software this is how you program it and so what's behind uh, the 3-4 well it's actually a multi-action button and you can see over here there's a multi-action button that I've used and it does two things and the two things it does are a hotkey which is shift and M and then it types some text for me three over four so that's how that puts that in uh, here's an undo button and this is just a hotkey does control Z the usual undo action this is the back button it takes me back because that time signature was a folder if I click on here you can see it's a folder that's got 15 items in it these ones here again multi actions the multi actions are a hotkey and switching profile and it switches to a different layout called Dorico play and if I look here you'll see I've got different uh, profiles and there's Dorico play let's switch to that and that's where that would take me and these buttons here again hotkeys 
and there's no way I can remember all the different combinations. So that's the basics of the Stream Deck. These are the tools it comes with as standard. The ability to create folders, to switch profiles and create profiles, a multi-action where you can combine them together to do things. Um, no idea why you want a random action, but it got the controls here to do that. Uh, to launch a website, uh, to do hotkeys and a hotkey switch, if you want to do two actions on a, uh, a hotkey. Um, open, you can open a piece of software type text and control multimedia so these are the standard actions that you get and you get a few others as well uh, these are called plugins each collection of tools is a plugin and it comes with other plugins I'm, I'm using OBS studio at the moment but I've turned that off it's not in the menu system so it just keeps this tidy for me um, so various different plugins that you can get and you can get more by clicking on here and it takes you to Elegato's um, sort of store and you can download uh, various tools and add more uh, plugins to this so there's Cubase there uh, there's MIDI because I do a lot of music work I've got a MIDI a section of MIDI tools that I've brought in uh, you won't find Microsoft Flight Simulator or Axis and O's here they haven't contributed to this I'll show you in the next video where you get the plugins for that okay let's have a look at how it works with Microsoft Flight Simulator, but without axes and O's, just what I can do with it straight away without using axes and O's software. Let's get rid of that. Okay, I will shrink this down. Okay, so what I want to do is to create a profile and start to control these switches here using my Stream Deck. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to create a profile so we'll have a new profile imaginatively called demo for today so I've got a demo profile that we can use now we'll get rid of that I've got a uh, key here for flight simulator and what that does is it launches my flight simulator it's got a the flight simulator launcher the home button takes me back here so flight simulator normally i would press on here to get lobby's axis and those running i use this for my head tracker and when i click on here it's got multiple actions uh firstly actually fire up microsoft flight simulator and take me to this profile called plane choice which i've called on my uh, button here the hangar it's where I can choose which uh, plane, which layout I want, depending on which aeroplane I'm flying. But for now, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Flight Simulator is already running, so I'm just going to go straight to the hangar, and that's where I would choose the layout. But I'm going to create a new one because I'm going to create my new demo profile. So I want this to switch profile. And I want it to switch to my demo profile and I'd like a nice graphic on there and I'm going to be programming the 172 so what I've got here is an icon for the uh, 172 the buttons here are actually 72 pixels by 72 it will scale you can put bigger graphics in it will scale them down but you're just really wasting memory for when you do that so i resize mine as close to 172 as uh, to 72 pixels across as, as possible um but it will scale and it doesn't mess up the aspect ratio so it doesn't have to be square but this one actually is so if we drop that into here you'll see let's put the icon there and I'd like some text on here so if I put demo 172 and I quite like it at the bottom and in black So that's beginning to stand out now I can see that profile okay so there's no save button or anything like that I just click on there 
and that should switch to my dem demo profile. It's a brand new profile and every new profile has this welcome and you click on there and it launches their website. Welcome to Stream Deck. But I'm going to get rid of that so we'll delete that. Okay, so what I want to do is to put an action on here. I'm going to use this square here to control the beacon light. And let's get rid of here and we'll have a look and see what we've got. It's going to be, I'm going to use a hotkey switch. I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut and it's going to be a switch because I want it to do on and off. So we'll drop that into here. And I'm going to call it BCN, Beacon. And it's there and it's in black. Let's change that to white so it stands out. Yeah, beacon. Now I want some graphics for that. All I did earlier was I took a snip of that screen here to get a switch. And I used a bit of uh, art of graphics software to take that off. So I've got the switch with no label. And I'm going to drop that onto here. Now you can see because it's a switch, it's got two possible icons. It's got an off and an on version. So if I drop the off one in here, and I'll drop the on version there. So I've now got both icons available to me. So it's got two states. And if I press on here, it gives me an error because it doesn't know what to assign to it. So if we go back and look in our control options on the keyboard, I can search for the beacon and that's Alt H. So if we resume that, what I want to do is to go back into my so this software here and it's just going to watch me do Alt H. And it's a toggle, so it's the same for both on and off, Alt H. So if I test that button now, you can see that the graphic here has changed and it's also working actually in the flight simulator as well that's working on and off so that looks fine but it has got its limitations if I click elsewhere so that uh, the flight simulator has lost the focus input focus if I press this button here the graphic is changing but nothing's happening on the flight simulator. Equally, if I go back in and give it the focus, if I change it with the mouse here, the icon hasn't changed. So they're not linked together satisfactorily. And that's where axes and O's comes in. So we can sort that out in the next video and show you the power of axes and O's so that the two are linked together um, and it'll work whether it's got the input focus or not and if you switch it here it will switch it back here okay so i'll see you in the next video